I am so, so glad the HEMA committee report has come out. It's very disturbing to read about all of the experiences that have happened to women, but it's finally so validating. You know, I feel like we're finally being listened to. So proud of, uh, you know, the way Women in Cinema Collective has been very, very active. It's incredible to think about what they've been able to achieve. They've faced a lot of intimidation, I'm sure of it, you know, because they are taking a very, very direct, like out there powerful stance. People say that, oh, you know, now we're so afraid to, to hire women. <laughs> and that is so funny. I mean, if you haven't done anything wrong, yeah. why are you afraid? <laughs> Every day as a woman on a set, whether you're uh, an an actress or somebody in the crew, there are things that people do which shows that you are a dispensable part of. They do try to tell you, you know, hey, you're only here because we decided to make this movie on a man. Hi, Zareen. Welcome to The Quint. Hi, Swati. Thank you so much. Before we talk about the film and how brilliant it is, for all the love you guys have been receiving and all the top honours y'all have won at the National Awards, so big congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a little unbelievable, honestly. Yeah. Um, I think when I signed on to do this film, I had no idea of the kind of impact that it would have. It's so dialogue intensive. And especially for a non-Malayali audience, you know, you can't even take your eyes off the screen for like a few seconds. You miss a very important detail. It's not easy for the audience to sit with an uncomfortable film. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really glad they're doing so. But I think the story, you know, is really the need of the hour. It's a film that has yet again started a conversation which is so relevant with everything that's happening around us right now. You know, we will talk about that, but first let's talk a little bit more about your film. You're playing a character that, you know, experiences sexual assault. Um, I would like to think when you are portraying a character like this, it's like you're portraying someone else's lived experiences. If you had to look at the kind of impact it has on you as an actor, what was that like for you? It was a huge responsibility. When I heard uh, the script after I got selected, I was uh, amazed. There's a lot going on in this film and uh, if the execution falters, it yeah. can be all over the place. Considering what was happening or what is continuing to happen in the industry or like nationwide it has become like an even more relevant uh, film and I'm glad people are taking stock of it and discussing this in the light of that. They are drawing comparisons currently with the film and with what is going on in the Malayalam film industry um, so I think the film couldn't have come at a better time it's telling you the reality. It feels like this you know huge constructive coincidence. I hate to say this but uh, I'm I'm glad, you know, our film is sort of pushing the discussion forward. Um, but beyond that, beyond the appreciation that the film is receiving, which I'm very grateful for, I would like to see an action being taken against these injustices. I think we're all hoping for that. Come back to your film. Uh, playing the character, you know, playing Anjali in this film, what do you think it has added to your life? You know, how do you think, have you experienced some sort of a shift emotionally? I think for me, the biggest lesson was, obviously, you do need uh, people to change their mindset, you know, about how uh, toxic male behavior works and everything. You're the only person who can protect yourself. You still can't trust the people around you. That was like a major, major lesson and revelation. And these are people, you know, that she was, uh, it was like family. For her, for an actor, this is what you're looking for, you know, to explore the full range of emotions. An interesting thing I noted is that a few people who had uh, come up to me after watching the film, they told me that uh, there wasn't a closure for them. There wasn't uh, any action taken against these men. Um, they weren't really held accountable for their actions. I've understood that in a way by closure they probably mean a solution i mean if you had ended it off you know with uh, them being taken to court or the police station i don't know if it would have given people the satisfaction and the discomfort that comes with it you know that's also one of the reasons like we spoke about there not being closure right that's one of the reasons that i kept thinking that 
uh, somewhere this film is also like a self-reflective, you know, commentary on the entire the the Me Too movement that happened in the industry where people were not probably held accountable. You know, somewhere it also for me shines light on the people who were maybe accessories in it but not held accountable. Do you think like would you agree with what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, change is always slow, yeah. and um, every time you know I. I hear about an incident or, you know, one more name coming up. I'm just, it's so infuriating. But also, this is the first time uh, there is at least a semblance of, you know, calling out happening. Yeah. Otherwise, earlier it would just be hush-hush, you know, brushed under the carpet and all of that. Right. And five years ago, when I started work, uh, I started my work in Bombay. But when I had come to Kerala, I had no idea of how the industry would be like, you know, it yeah. was only people who were working in the industry who were deeply involved with how things went. Only they were able to tell me, hey, you know what? Watch out. Take care of yourself. Protect yourself. Take a stance. One thing I'd really appreciate someone telling me, it's a friend of mine, an editor, when I told him that, you know, I'm shifting to Kerala, I've uh, decided to make the move. He told me, if something weird or unsavory or bad, if it happens, don't be afraid to make a scene. And uh, it takes a lot of courage to do that. I I will do what it takes to protect. Uh, because one person speaking up is so powerful. I'd like people to start thinking about, you know, implementing these changes in their daily lives and their uh, social situations daily. It could be like some small comment that your parents make or, uh, you know, your friends are uh, saying something really, really messed up and inappropriate. It starts with those small things and don't be afraid to take that call, I would say. It has to really start from each one of us. You have been a part of the industry for a while. Uh, there was a quote that you said, you know, only if they were on the oppressed side would they know what we go through. Is there an instance that comes to your mind that made you feel like, oh, I am on the other side, which makes me feel oppressed? I had started my work in uh, Bombay. And after that, when I came to Kerala, uh, I'd say the history of working in Bombay was a sort of privilege for me. Because I could already sense the shift in the way people were, uh, you know, talking to me, approaching to me. Oh, you know what? She's been in Bombay. Uh, there was this whole let's not mess with her uh, vibe that I was getting from a production that I was talking to. And also, you know, I was putting up an act of like, hmm, you know, don't mess with me. I will do it. I will do what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> to protect myself and I thought you know that was a, a shield for me but it only worked for a while slowly when I started making my way in the industry uh, it's just you know the everyday things that people do in the industry when you're on a film set this and this is something that a lot of women have my uh, co-actors or like my colleagues in the industry have resonated with as well. Every day as a woman on a set, whether you're uh, an, an actress or somebody in the crew, there are things that people do which shows that you are a dispensable part of the production. So they do try to tell you, you know, hey, you're only here because we decided to make this movie on a man. And it's because of him that you're here. Yeah. And you know, after a while, I just started giving it back to them because I was getting roles uh, which were very prominent. And I told them, if that's what you think, uh, if you think you can replace me, go ahead and do it. I am not going to like compromise on these things. It took a lot of courage and it takes a lot of privilege also to be able to do this. Oh, it could be as simple as, you know, the, the lead, uh, the main lead of the film being called on set much later than you are and you are just doing there uh you know you're just marinating there in your costume for like three hours and then our hero just shows up you know making an entrance and after a while I said mm, I'm not okay with this I'm yeah. done once they realized that you know they couldn't intimidate me um it was very 
like I could take charge of the situation from that when I did not respond to their intimidation. Like, hey, you know what? I've seen worse. You know, while you were talking, I was thinking about uh, when you spoke, like even in the film, right? You say that I don't want to tell anyone. I want to believe that it didn't happen to me. I want to forget about it, right? Uh, it also comes from this sense of, I would like to think, a uh, bit of this inherent fear that survivors of assault have, that what if I am doubted? The onus of proof is on me. Like very recently, a prominent actress uh, in Kerala was talking about how the media over here is so obsessed, or like media in general is like obsessed with, you know, why aren't you taking names? We should name and shame them. And she literally said, but when has that ever worked out well for us? When a woman talks about an injustice that she faced, the basic moral responsibility that we have as members of society is to listen to her. Yeah, like give her the space to like open up. We, we really need to bring about a change in how we bring up the women in this country, how we bring up girls in our family, you know, that has to shift. We keep telling women uh, that, you know, if an issue happens, you know, keep it very hush-hush. You don't want your reputation to take a hit. All of this burden, it's on me, you know. I have to make the peace, uh, even though I was the one who was violated. Yeah. How messed up is that? And and we need to teach accountability to men. Yes. It starts with listening. I am so, so glad the Hema Committee report has come out because it's, it's so validating to all. It's very disturbing to read about all of the experiences that have happened to women. But it's finally so validating. You know, I feel like we're finally being listened to. I'm really quite excited to see how the industry responds to this. What are some of the changes that you think the industry as a whole can really enforce and put some rules in place where it feels like the women are protected, don't feel scared to speak up? Uh, I've actually heard of this happen to a colleague of mine. She was talking about how there's a, a fight scene that was happening, okay? And uh, it's basically a man overpowering her in this scene. The director, he had like absolutely, he, he just did not give them any direction. He just said, just improv the scene and do it, you know. Her, her co-actor, the guy, he showed full strength while overpowering her and like her hands were bruised. It's so messed up. Everything in a film is so carefully constructed and choreographed. And the fact that he just said, just improv this it's so careless you know how it, it was so infuriating to hear about this also yeah. in the name of uh, creativity or like uh, creative liberty there is so much crap that happens and it is it's not creativity you are literally like parading your power do you feel like you know with the hema committee do you think this is like a big first step that you know, is should be welcomed and instead of people kind of doubting it, talking against it, should really be supporting such a safe space. I've heard uh, people say that, oh, you know, now we're so afraid to to hire women. <laughs> and that is so funny. I mean, if you haven't done anything wrong, yeah. why are you afraid? <laughs> it's so obvious also. It's only people who know that they have done something weird or wrong. It's only those circles and factions who are talking about it like. So would I be right to say if I asked you a question, what are the changes you've seen after the HEMA committee report? Would this be your answer then? For the first time, I am seeing fear. And uh, that fear is about people being held accountable. Yeah. And already, like, uh, you know, I've had a few calls from productions who are approaching me for work. And uh, they've, they've started taking the work more seriously without even me having to ask them that, you know, hey, we're, we're going to do an agreement and let's work on it together. Um, this didn't happen like a few years ago. So that is one direct change that I have seen. And just the fact that all of it is finally out there in the open, like aspiring actors or people who are uh, wanting to get into this industry, they at least know what they're getting into. And I hope it doesn't push them away uh, from the industry. There is action being taken. And uh, I, I never 
ever thought that these conversations would happen. Malayalam cinema has always been progressive, but I haven't seen that change being reflected in society. Society over here is fairly regressive, like the rest of India and the world itself. Yeah. Like when I moved in over here for the first time, I was thinking, oh my God. God, you know, your movies <laughs> are a complete shift from your mindset. Um, you know, after yeah. the Hima committee report came out, uh, President Mr. Mohan Lal stepped down and along with him, the 17 other members as well, right? When people who are in position of power, of responsibility, kind of take a step back at such an important time, do you feel then who is responsible, who is liable, who's going to answer, who's going to back us? I'm really so proud of, uh, you know, the way Women in Cinema Collective has been very, very active. It's incredible to think about what they've been able to achieve. They've faced a lot of intimidation, I'm sure of it, you know, because they are taking a very, very direct, like, out there powerful stance. I feel like we started this fight, we'll finish it off though. <laughs> like, we're ready. <laughs> Zareen, if I had to ask you, say, three top things that instantly come to your mind when I talk about implementing changes in the industry, what would they be? I think protecting the people who were protecting all the women who have spoken about uh, all their bad experiences. Like, of course, accountability is one, for sure, you know, holding the people, perpetrators accountable. What happens to the people who speak about these things, you know, what happens to their careers, to their personal lives. Because only when you protect these voices, do you encourage more people to come out uh, about these, you know, what, are, what has happened to them. Do you encourage this more? I don't know if uh, this can be said about HEMA committee, but I think law has to change. How the burden of proof always falls on the victim that fundamentally needs to change legality and justice are like two completely different things i need i want justice yeah. so for that to happen i i really hope you know uh people in positions of powers uh in positions of power the one who who have the potential to be real change makers they start thinking about this in the film there is there are a lot of times the other actors tell you that, you know, oh, we told you not to drink with the men. We told you not to drink. Uh, we told you not to wear these clothes. Uh, it's the victim is all of a sudden blamed. The focus shifts on what you appeared as, as opposed to what the man did. Is this something that you also see around you? Absolutely. I see it. Along with that, what has been really encouraging and heartening to see is there is a response and call out for this as well the moment somebody says oh what was she wearing or uh, you know why was she out at this time there are people who are immediately responding that's quite nice to see and the numbers are slowly increasing you know the number of people who would have responded to this five years ago is far lesser than what it is right now you know um uh, i was having this conversation recently with my grandmother and uh, she was telling me how like when you started uh, this, your work in the industry and everything, I was very, very scared about what can happen to you. Uh, you know, I was very nervous. Uh, she would always try telling me, you know, like when you go to a meeting or an audition, always cover up, uh, you know, be safe and all of that. And I told her, Nani, it's fine. Like I can take care of myself. It's all right. You know, I'm trying to do as many things as possible to protect myself and also to do well. Uh, in my work she was telling me recently about how it was so stupid of her to you know change to ask me to change my behavior if she can think like that and she says she wasn't right in telling you to cover up that's amazing absolutely you mentioned that she was nervous when you would go for auditions and meeting but were you ever nervous knowing what the industry is like i was nervous and uh, i would always check you know where's this audition happening uh, if it's happening in one of those weird shaped uh, hotels, I was like, no, 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 I'm not coming. <laughs> I'm not going. I am ready to risk losing job over my safety. Yeah, my safety is my priority. For me. Let's hope that no woman has to worry about her safety and choose safety over a job and both should be just yeah. 
Easy. I know, I know. This would never be the case for a man. Thank you so much for talking to me, Zareen. Thank you so much.